what in the world is going to happen on September 24th? That's the question. There's a swirl in end times prophecy circles about an ominous announcement from a member of the German government. Specifically, a German legislator announced, everyone will not forget September 24, 2022, and everywhere will know exactly where he or she was. That's the quote that's circulating. It's mysterious. It's ominous. This is Jennifer LeClaire, and this is Praying the News. On today's broadcast, we'll look behind that suggestive statement at what may be brewing and what it may have to do with the Jewish calendar. We'll also look at a prophetic word I shared in July 2022 that offers insight into how to prepare in this hour. We'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. You have a prophetic potential. You have a prophetic expression. You're invited to get ignited. Ignite is more than a company of prophetic people. It's my prophetic family, and it can be yours too. Get equipped in a safe environment, free from judgment and Jezebels. Get help interpreting your dreams and visions. Engage in prophetic exercises. Get your questions answered. Grow in your prophetic anointing. Walk in your prophetic lifestyle. Get ignited today at ignitenow.org. Let's listen in to the exact quote from this German governmental legislator. Let's listen in for ourselves. The context seemed to be something around issues with Ukraine, according to DW News. Listen in. And so after the special address by German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, we're now going to hear from the German opposition leader, CDU party, Friedrich Merz. President of the Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, this 24th of September 2022 is going to be a day which we will remember and we're going to say about this day in the future that I will remember where I was. Those are bold words. Now, I wasn't alive when JFK was killed, but I'll never forget 9-11. I'll never forget where I was. I'll always remember that. It was tragic. It was traumatic. I'll always remember where I was when the January 6th Capitol riots, 2021, when, you know, all the chaos broke loose in the Capitol. I'll always remember that. That was very disturbing. I'll never forget. I'll always remember where I was in the uh, Columbine shooting, 1999, when 32 people were killed, the space shuttle disasters. But beyond that, there are not too many world events that stood out during my lifetime as jaw droppers. I mean, those are the ones that come to mind. And I was a journalist for 30 years, so I was around. So the German lawmaker's statement is beyond bold and demands curiosity. And you have to wonder, what substantiates his statement? The answer is, nobody knows, but many are concerned. Will the stock markets crash? Will some new war be declared? Will a government fold? Is this this hype? The answer is, Nobody knows, but many people are concerned. What we do know is the days that follow September 24th, which are, of course, September 25th and September 26th, are significant. As Michael Snyder points out in his blog, Elel 29 begins at sundown on September 24th and runs until sundown September 25th. And we saw, if you remember, we saw the worst stock market crash in U.S. history to that point during 2001, during the same period of which we're speaking. Now, the stock markets will be closed Sunday, so it can't really happen that day. But is that it? Is that something? Is that, you know, I mean, nobody knows, but everybody's concerned. There's a real buzz out there. If you haven't heard about it, you're hearing it first here. Rosh Hashanah begins at sundown on Sunday, September 25th. And a seven-year Shemitah cycle will end, and a new one begins on the evening of the 25th. And that's according to Jewish tradition. Now, James Bailey, he's the founder of Z3News.com. He says he had a dream uh, on August 24th, and he said he was speaking in the dream with an unseen person and told them, quote, 
nothing will be the same after September 25th, 26th. And he believes the dream was a prophetic warning. He says the first dream was followed by another dream a few days later, and he shares his insights. He says, nothing will be the same is the same as saying everything is going to change. Since no limitations were given, I believe the magnitude of these changes will be very big, impacting everything, everywhere, and everyone. So we won't have to wonder whether or not this happens because it will be way too big to miss. That's what he said. He also said, after September 25th, 26, reveals... That phrase, after September 25th, 26, reveals the start without revealing any ending date. So he says he thinks this means these changes will continue indefinitely with no going back to the way things were before. He also said this. He said, although that sounds extreme, I believe it's just a confirmation of scriptural prophecies regarding the generation living at the time of the Lord's return, which I believe is our generation, he said. Then he said, Jesus identified major changes coming upon the world at that time. Other scriptures reveal those changes will only accelerate as the day of his return approaches. And that is true. I agree with that. I agree. Jesus said that. We we can expect that. Now, Bailey believes the dream pertains to this September and says we may not see anything unusual on September 24th, but when we look back, when we look back, we'll see it as a major turning point. Now, of course, now you've got all these speculators out there on YouTube and everybody's got an opinion about what all this means. Some speculators are suggesting it's the beginning of the new world order or that Jesus is coming back on that day. That I doubt. But we should be praying instead of speculating. And as Bailey rightly points out, three of the largest market crashes in the past 100 years were all triggered during Hebrew holy days, including Yom Kippur in 1929 and in 1987, uh, also Yom Kippur. And in 2008, it was on Rosh Hashanah. I mean, all to the exact day. What are the chances that the odds, you know, that this would just I mean, what are the chances? It's beyond coincidence, he believes. And I would tend to agree. Not a coincidence. I don't believe in coincidences. Don't believe in them. So back to the original question, what will happen on September the 24th, 2022? Well, it may be about what happens in the spirit more than what happens in the natural. However, it would be very odd for a government official who, you know, would stand on the platform and and speak. He didn't speak anything about the spirit. So I don't know. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem to correlate with what this uh, government official was talking about. But I've got some prophetic breadcrumbs that I'm following. And it's disturbing. It's not fearful, but it's disturbing. So for about eight months before Russia invaded Ukraine, I was led to study the history of Russia, the history of Germany, and the world wars. Now, I've never liked that stuff. I've never liked it. I've never enjoyed all the History Channel stuff. It's just, eh, I, I've never been, but I was, and I devoured, I mean, I was led to watch it. I consumed it, devoured it, fell asleep watching it every night. I was mesmerized by it. And just before, just before, it was like eight months before, and then here we have Russia evading Ukraine, talk of World War Three. you know, talk of restoring the Soviet uh, Union to its former glory, all these things going on in the earth. Now, because of that, we have what, you know, food shortages, supply chain issues, wheat issues, you know, I mean, all these signs of the times are happening so fast, so quickly before our eyes. Now, here's the thing. About two months ago, listen carefully, about two months ago, I was led to start studying the stock market crash of 1929 and the Great Depression. I'm not big on stocks. I'm not a financial investor. I don't flip things. That's not my world. But I was led to study it from a historical point of view. You know, they do say history repeats itself. And I'm not saying we're entering into a Great Depression. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying when he leads me to study things, when God leads me to study things, there's always a reason. And historically in my life, when he leads me to study things is to prepare me or to give me knowledge on how to pray to avert something or to walk through something. Okay. 
And so in the mid-year prophetic update that I uh, held this year in uh, July 2022, I prophesied that it's time to get your house in order. And I feel even stronger about that now than I did a few months ago. I want you to listen into that prophetic word. It's really going to help you right after this message. Throughout scripture, God gives us end times revelation. And Jesus told us to watch and pray in relation to the end times over and over again. But how do you practically do this? What does watching and praying in the last days look like? God is raising up end times watchmen all over the world. Many are having dreams, visions, receiving prophetic words about the last of the last days. If the Holy Spirit is stirring your heart about the end times, this book is for you. In this timely book, you'll discover how to discern your calling as an end times watchman. Walk in an end times lifestyle and anointing. Prepare a generation for the Lord's return. Navigate eschatological views and apocalyptic dreams and visions. Practically watch for the true signs of the times. Deliver end times warnings with wisdom. Pray in agreement with God's end times plans. Intercede from an eternal perspective. Stand in your end times assignment and so much more. Pick up your copy of the End Times Watchman, the prophetic intercessor's guide to watching and praying through the last days on Amazon or jenniferleclair.org slash end times watchman. As Christians, we should not fear. We should draw near to God. We should prepare our hearts and make natural preparations. Listen to this prophetic word from July, 2022. The Lord told me it's time to get your house in order. What does that mean? It means to improve or correct the way you do things. Some of you, the Lord's been talking to you about canceling whatever, saving some money, and you. but it's a convenience for you. It's a luxury for you, and you don't want to cancel it. You don't want to deal with it. We need to be obedient. You know, you've maybe heard Joyce Meyer talk about the grocery cart. You ever heard that story? How she didn't want to put the grocery cart away, and the Holy Ghost would always like, you got to put the grocery cart away. And she resisted doing that for a long time, and finally she decided, I'm going to put the grocery cart away. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. One of my mentors many years ago, she would be in a hurry getting home, trying to get to church, and she would, she would drive fast through her neighborhood. And the Holy Spirit said, every time you break the law, every time you disobey me, you're losing a little bit more of your authority. We need to get our house in order. Some of you, the Lord has spoken to you about your health. I'm not looking at anybody. <laughs> Some of you, the Lord has spoken to you about your health to get in shape, to go to the gym, to cut out all the sugar and the soda, and to eat something with some nutritional value. Please get your house in order. Some of you, God has spoken to you about your finances. Some of you, God is speaking to you about your mind. You're messed up in your mind, man. Get it together because you won't make it through the end times and all that stuff going on up here. Can't even think straight. Can't think right. You know, some of you, God, God's dealing with you about your attitudes. Listen, when God begins to deal with you about something, let him have his way. It's not all about the money. It's not all about the health. It's about what's going on up and what's going on in here. You can come to church and just bless the Lord and all that stuff. And, oh, we need a move. We need a move. We are here. And just mad, madder than a hornet's nest at the person you're sitting next to. Some of y'all left your spouse at home, got a big fight. He's texting you, she's texting you right now, and you just got him on mute. <laughs> Ignore, right? And you try to sit here and think you're going to be blessed by what I say. Ooh, y'all don't like me no more, do you? Can I tell it like it is? We need more people to tell it like it is, and the church wouldn't be so messed up. <laughs> Amen. Amen attitudes, belief, get your devotional time in order, get your family in order. Matthew 6, seek the kingdom of God above all else. What are you seeking more than the kingdom? 
and live righteously and he'll give you everything you need. Look at this in the contemporary English version of Matthew 6, 33. But more than anything else, that means there's other things you can pursue. You can pursue your career. You pursue your relationships. You know, you pursue your education. You know, God wants us to live a balanced life, right? We can't just sit in church all day long. We can't just pray all day long, worship all day long. We have practical things we need to do. But more than anything else, somebody say more than anything else. More than anything else, put God's work first and do what he wants. Then the other things will be yours as well. See, God's will is the safest place to be. God's will is the safest place to be. Remember, the Israelites didn't feel the effects of the plagues that came against Egypt. There was a light in Goshen. They didn't have boils. They didn't have frogs. They weren't affected by that. They were largely immune from all that. See, you are in the world, but not of the world. That means you're a citizen of a different kingdom. You live on a different plane. You don't have to worry about all of these things. And I believe that, like I said, fear opens the door to the enemy. Trusting God and following his leadership shuts him out. So then how do we respond to this September 24th doom and gloom, this ominous statement, this apocalyptic possibility? I mean, people are really, really, really going all out with this. So how do we respond? Well, first of all, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. The thing that Job greatly feared came upon him. God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Number two, get your house in order. Just as I prophesied, get your house in order. Get your spiritual house in order. Get your natural house in order. Make preparations. Listen, I'm not talking about being a doomsday prepper. I'm talking about some, you know, natural preparation, some spiritual preparation. Understand that we are in the end times and watch and pray for the signs of the times and watch and pray through these seasons that we find ourselves in. Stay alert in the spirit. Now is the time to press into God like never before. Our lives are hidden with God in Christ. We will weather whatever storm comes because we have him and he is our shelter in a storm. Now, I'm not saying there's a great depression coming. Please don't put those words in my mouth. What I'm saying is we don't know what's going on. I'm sharing with you what I receive. I have a part. You have a part. But let's not go crazy. Let's not buy into the conspiracy theories that are online with people trying to scare people to death. Don't listen to that. Don't give ear to it. Just stay watchful and just pray. Thanks for listening. Please give us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts and share this with your friends. You can find the show notes at jenniferleclair.org slash praying the news. Until next time, keep praying the news.